Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. We have been discussing a very important topic in this course in over the last few lectures. In the last lecture we have been speaking about CH activation. CH activation is an important area of research in organometallic chemistry and has tremendous potential for academic as well as industrial applications. Now, what we discussed in our last lecture was how many types of CH activation methods are known and in that context we looked at intramolecular CH activation reactions. We also discussed at how this CH activation reaction proceeds and what we saw was that CH activation reactions uh, originates with agostic CHM kind of interactions. So, in our last lecture what we had seen is the methods of for CH active activation reactions and in particular we have discussed examples of an intramolecular CH activation reaction. We have also came across agostic M type interactions these agostic interactions are at the source of CH activations and hence they are of importance and they, they are useful. And what we have also looked at evidences for agostic interactions. This involves various spectroscopic techniques like proton NMR, carbon 13 NMR, IR as well as X-ray and neutron diffraction studies. So, what we discussed in the last lecture was the fact that CH activation initiates at agostic interaction and that agostic interaction uh, weakens the CH bond and does not really fully cleave it and that weakening of the CH bond can be observed in the spectroscopic signature of various spectroscopy like the proton, carbon, IR as well as structural characterization using X-ray and Newton diffraction techniques. Now, between the types of CH activation we have spoken about in tramolecular CH activation and in today's lecture we are going to talk something more interesting and more difficult which is in tarmolecular CH activation. So, in this lecture we are going to look at in tarmolecular CH activation and how this proceeds. Now, as for the intermolecular CH activation, inter examples of such activation was long known for aromatic substrates.
It is important to note that for the inframolecular CH activation we too have looked also looked at a similar aromatic substrate whereby a CH bond underwent activation intramolecularly in our as discussed in the last class. Also for as for intramolecular CH activation uh, the prerequisite criteria was that the comp metal complex has to be electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated the same holes for intermolecular CH activation where the metal complex has to be both electronically as well as coordinatively unsaturated to undergo such CH activation. This is illustrated in this ruthenium complex. So, this has 16 valence electrons and hence electronically unsaturated. And also the coordination number is 4 and hence coordinatively unsaturated. So, this complex fulfills the criteria for CH activation. So, when treated with naphthalene again a aromatic compound intermolecular CH activation is observed and the product obtained is this CH activated product. and ruthenium is bound to this naphthalene moiety as well as the hydrogen. So, here the activation of a CH from this carbon and this hydrogen has happened as a result of oxidative addition. Hence, the coordination number now has increased to 6. So, it is become coordinatively saturated and the valence electron is it has become 18 valence electron complex thus this has become saturated both electronically and coordinatively. So, the basic criteria for CH activation is common for what was there existed for intramolecular CH activation reactions. These are commonly observed for aromatic substrates as is seen over here and that this proceeds via oxidative addition on a comp complex which is both electronically and coordinatively unsaturated. As a result of this intermolecular CH activation, the final complex usually is a ruthenium aryl hydride complex as the CH bond of this arene got activated. 
resulting in a electronically as well as coordinatively saturated 18 valence electron compound having coordination number of 6 as shown over here. Now, with these several other examples of CH activation uh, became prominent. Now, what is important is to move beyond. So, the utility of CH activation was further realized in terms of CH functionalization which proceeded after CH activation. So, let us take a look at how CH activation is very difficult because of strong CH bonds and its selectivity is an issue. And ubiquitous nature very challenging now what we saw that these initiates with c h m agostic interaction this c h m agostic interaction weakens c h bonds, but does not cleave it. Now, it is up to this far that we have been seeing, we have seen examples of both type intramolecular as well as intermolecular CH activation. Now, what I am going to talk about is something beyond this agostic and CH activation and something utility wise very significant is that after the CH activation has happened, one can achieve CH functionalization. Now, CH functionalization is a very important step whereby this hydrogen of this CH bond after activation get replaced placed with a functional group. So, what it means is that CH functionalization gives C F G bonds or groups. So, what has been achieved by this is that the hydrogen has been replaced by a functional group and hence C H functionalization is a very important area of organometallic research. Now, as we see if we take a look at the whole perspective that this C H activation it is like it starts with a C H M type agostic interaction leading to C H activation and followed by C H functionalization where the hydrogen is replaced by a functional group. Now, this can be done catalytically, this can be done stoichiometrically and this is of immense interest to both industry as well as academia alike. Why it is interesting to industry? Because it helped produce uh, different 
value added substrates if I can functionalize the CH bonds and that will can lead to various valued commodities that we use in our day to day life. And it is also important from academic perspective because it throws open a very challenging intellectual problem that one has to solve with regard to carrying this functionalization that one has to break a strong CH bond and also one has to achieve selectivity. in this ubiquitous CH bond that are always present. Now the first and the pioneering work in this area has been uh, done by Shilov who has shown the first example of CH activation followed by CH functionalization whereby he had achieved the CH activation in a catalytic fashion. and CH functionalization in a stoichiometric fashion. So, Shilov put together the whole concept in terms of chemical catalysis and achieved all the way from CH activation to CH functionalization in which the first part was achieved in a catalytic fashion and the second part was achieved in a stoichiometric fashion. Let me illustrate this pioneering work of Shilev through the example that has been studied. So, this platinum complex bis aqua platinum chloro moiety 2 water 1 chlorine platinum plus binding and activating a methane molecule so this is formed from the cationic fragment pt plus by reacting with methane. And this what is observed is an agostic interaction. Type So, what one can see is that this cationic platinum complex reacts with molecule of methane leading to the first agostic type interaction in form of platinum interacting with CH bond of methane in the cationic species. Now, this compound as a result of this agostic interaction the hydrogen becomes acidic in nature and eliminates a proton giving rise to this neutral platinum methyl complex. Now, this neutral methyl complex can be further protonated using deuterium plus producing CH3D 
molecule and giving back this uh, uh, chloride, uh, chloride, plat uh, chloride platinum plus complex which can again activate a methane molecule. So, what she have attained is a catalytic catalytic C8 activation cycle. So, why this is C H activation cycle? So, what we see is that C H more molecule is entering the cycle and it is getting cleaved as H and C H 3 and that the C H 3 is trapped with deuterium. So, the C H bond is indeed getting cleaved and that cleaving is happening via the initial agostic interaction. So, Shilov attained successfully this catalytic C H activation cycle, but what is more important in this is the next step where he achieved C H functionalization. So, this was C H activation and Shilov achieved further C H functionalization. And that is obtained by treating this bis, uh, aqua chloro platinum complex with this platinum 4 compound PtCl6 2 minus. So, this is a platinum 4 compound and this catalytic cycle is all done with platinum 2 compound. So, upon treatment of this platinum 2 methyl with this platinum hexachloro platinum 4 compound that leads to this platinum Two co compound where this methyl get exchanged with the chlorine. This is a platinum 2 compound and it produces alongside this alongside a platinum 4 compound. So, this is a platinum 4 compound and this plat uh, uh, for this reaction this platinum 4 compound is used in stoichiometric amount. So, this was a catalytic cycle and this platinum 2 was treated stoichiometrically with platinum 4 compound leading to this platinum 4 compound which is platinum pentachloromethyl. Now, this platinum pentachloromethyl when treated with water produces platinum 2 compound plus HCl and this methyl gets hydrolyzed to give methanol. And this platinum 4 compound also decomposes to give 
platinum two compound along with CH3Cl. So, what is interesting is that CH bond of methane has produced methanol as well as methyl chloride which is CH3Cl. So, Shilav has selectively converted methane to methanol by replacing the hydrogen with hydroxide group and also it could convert methyl CH3H to CH3Cl where this hydrogen has been replaced by chlorine and it has done by two steps. One was this catalytic CH activation followed by stoichiometric CH functionalization. And this shows that these compounds are of tremendous use whereas, a comp inert compound like methane which has very strong CH bond can be made into useful value added chemicals in forms of methanol and methyl chloride. So, with this let me summarize the discussion on today's uh, topic. What we have discussed today is we have looked at uh, the intermolecular CH activation and then we have taken a pioneering example whereby intermolecular CH activation was converted to CH functionalization and this work was done by Shilov who had uh, done the CH activation in a catalytic fashion and then followed it up with CH functionalization in a stoichiometric uh, fashion and thereby could uh, functionalize methane to methanol as well as methyl chlorides. And uh, another interesting thing that we had discussed is that CH activation, uh, catalytic CH activation was performed in a catalytic fashion as I mentioned by catalytic CH activation whereas fun, uh, CH functionalization was done in a stoichiometric fashion. Also CH activation was achieved with platinum 2 complexes, CH functionalization was achieved from platinum 4 complexes and that shows uh, the uh, utility of this uh, uh, method and versatility, versatility of platinum as a metal because in a two different oxidation state it can perform two interesting reactions. Now, with this background we are going to take up something very interesting in next lecture that will discuss more examples of these intermolecular CH activations, the ones that followed uh, after Silov's work and also uh, would be very useful uh, in terms of understanding the chemistry of this kind of complexes. So, I look forward to take up this topic in the uh, next lecture until then thank you.